Chapter 47. Laura's Return. My mother wasn't the only one who was preparing to return to Earth's circles. Laura was also on the eve of the great undertaking. Informed of the event by some of my companions, I joined in a demonstration of affection and appreciation that a number of workers, particularly those in assistance and regeneration, were giving to the noble lady on account of her return to the human experience. The loving tribute took place on the night when the accounting department gave her a complete report of her entire service in the colony. It is impossible to translate into ordinary words the spiritual significance of that intimate celebration. The enchanting residence was full of melody and light. The flowers looked even more beautiful. Several families had come to honor the friend who was about to return. The majority of the visitors offered her their farewell wishes and then quickly took their leave. However, her closer friends remained until late at night. Thus, I had the opportunity to hear curious and wise observations. Laura seemed more circumspect, more serious. I noticed that she had to make an effort to share in the general optimism. In the crowded living room, she explained to the accounting department representative, I don't think I'll be around for more than two days. I've already finished the procedures at Elucidation's preparation services. And with a somewhat sad look, she concluded, As you can see, I'm ready. The representative, with a look of sincere fraternity, said encouragingly, I hope you are excited about the struggle. It is a glory to return to the world in your condition. You have thousands and thousands of hours of service in your favor in our community of over a million fellow spirits. Besides, your children will greatly stimulate you from here. All that is definitely comforting, Laura said without disguising her inner concern. But we must understand that reincarnation is always a mission of the utmost importance I know that my husband has preceded me in the enormous effort, and that my beloved children will be my constant friends. Yet, come now, don't get caught up in conjecture, Minister Genicio interrupted. We must trust in divine watch care and in ourselves. The resources of providence are unlimited. We must break the dark glasses that give us the picture that the physical landscape is a bitter exile. Don't think of possibilities of failure. Visualize only the probability of success. Furthermore, it's only fair for you to count on us, your friends, who will not be far away. As far as vibratory distance is concerned, think of the joy of helping old friends and reflect on the immense glory of being useful. Laura smiled and looked more encouraged and remarked, I have asked for the spiritual assistance of all my friends so that I may keep sight of the lessons I have learned here. I know that the earth is full of divine greatness. We just need to remember that our sun here is the same one that nourishes incarnates. Even so, my dear minister, I fear the temporary oblivion that befalls us. I feel like a patient who has just healed of many wounds. In fact, the wounds don't hurt anymore, but they're scars remain. The slightest scratch would be enough to return me to infirmity. The minister mouthed a gesture of understanding the meaning of her assertion, and it said, I'm aware of what the darkness of the lower inner sphere represents, but courage is essential, and you must proceed. We will help you to work much more for the good of others than for your own self-satisfaction The greatest danger has always been to linger in the complex temptations of selfishness. Here, she continued wisely, we can count on the spiritual vibrations of most of the inhabitants who have nearly all been educated according to the lessons of the redeeming gospel. And even though old weaknesses may creep up to the surface of our thoughts, we can find a natural defense in the environment here. On earth, however, Our good intentions are like a mere flickering flame in an immense sea of aggressive forces. Don't say that, interrupted the benevolent minister. Don't attach such importance to the influences of the lower zones. That is like arming the enemy so that he can torture us. The field of ideas is also a battlefield. Every light we kindle on earth will shine there forever. 
For the gale of human passions can never blow out a single light of God. Laura now seemed to see everything more clearly because of his suggestions. Her mental attitude seemed to have changed radically, and she spoke boldly. I'm convinced that your visit has been providential. I needed to have my spirits lifted. I only lacked your exhortation. It's true. Our mind is a constant battlefield. We must annihilate the evil and darkness within us, surprising them in the trenches without giving them the importance they claim. Yes, now I can see your point. Genicio smiled, satisfied, and added, Within our spiritual world, each idea is like a separate entity. We need to think about this. If we nourish the elements of the good, they will impel us towards our happiness and will be our armies of defense. On the other hand, if we nourish any element of evil, we build a safe haven for our worst enemies. At this point, the accounting department representative remarked, We can't forget that Laura is returning to Earth with extraordinary spiritual credit. Just today, the government office sent a note to the Ministry of Assistance recommending that the technical staff from reincarnation take the utmost care in dealing with the genetic elements that will shape our sister's new physical organism. Ah, that is true, she said. I asked for such a measure so that I wouldn't have to be subjected too much to the laws of heredity. I've been very worried about the bloodline. Notice, said the representative eagerly, that your merit in Nasalar is so great that the governor himself has determined direct measures. So don't worry, my friend, said Minister Genicio with a smile. You'll have several companions at your side working for your welfare. Thank God, Laura exclaimed, comforted. I only had to hear you. I only had to hear you. Lysias and his sisters, now, including the kind and benevolent Teresa, displayed sincere joy. My mother needed to forget her worries, the devoted attendant from assistance commented. After all, we won't be asleep up here. You're right, she concluded. I'll cultivate hope and will trust in the Lord and in all of you. From then on, all the comments entailed confidence and optimism. No one talked about her return to earth except as a blessed opportunity to learn and to do the good. As I took my leave late that night, Laura said in a maternal tone of voice, Tomorrow night, Andre, I'll be expecting you. We'll be having a small, intimate, friendly gathering. The Ministry of Communication has promised us a visit from my husband. Although Ricardo is already in a physical body, he will be brought here via the fraternal aid of some of our fellow spirits. I'll be saying goodbye tomorrow. Please come. I thanked her, deeply moved, and made a great effort to keep back the tears welling up in my heart from missing her already.